If you'll turn to your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 11 through 13, then I'm going to go over to chapter 6 and read verses 10 through 13. While you're turning there, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank God for calling me and using me. I just glorify Him and I lift His name on high. I'd like to thank my pastor for allowing me to stand behind this sacred desk and do what God has called me. Amen. I'd like to thank my wife for always being there for me and supporting Amen. me. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. And if wherever you're at, if you will stand for the reading of the word. Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It reads as such. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Then chapter 6, then over in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 13, says this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having none, all to stand. Amen. 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 You may be seated. <clears throat> I've entitled this sermon today... You're equipped. You're equipped. In this letter to the Ephesians, Paul really gets home of who we are and what we are to do. You know, I was looking up and preparing this different theologians and different studies and commentaries. And I, John McCray said, Ephesians contains a carefully reasoned and precisely worded theology presented in a systematic way. There is no letter in the Pauline corpus that more precisely and succinctly presents the rudimentary elements of his understanding of salvation history than this one. F.F. F. Bruce calls Ephesians the Rolls Royce of the epistles. And C.H. Dodd said Ephesians was the crown of Paulianism. See, the book of Ephesians is broken up in two parts. The first three chapters talks about who we are in Christ and who he is in us. It talks about God's plan of salvation and because of what Christ did for us, we are now grafted and adopted into the family of God. And since you believed on the Lord Jesus the Christ, you are part of this family. And it does not matter who you are, where you came from, or how much money you got. If you believed upon Jesus, you're part of this family. And you have all the same rights and privileges of any other member of this family. Amen. And Paul goes into the, who the Father is to you and who Jesus is and who the Holy Spirit is and who we are in Him. See, once you understand when you're a part of something or you're in something, yet you have an understanding where you stand in that thing or with that person, then you know what you're able to do and what you're not able to do. So Paul, in those first three chapters, tells us who we are. Well, and because of who our daddy is, well, yeah. and because he is victorious, we are victorious. Yeah. Because of who our daddy is and what he's done for us, since he's more than a conqueror, we're more than a conqueror. Yeah. Yeah. See, Paul goes into that. Once you know who you are, then you're able to do something. I was watching a movie one time, and in this movie... This girl was being, uh, they were talking to this lady, and they were just ridiculing her. And she goes, and she stops them, and she says, you really don't know who I am, do you? <laughs> and they say, well, no, you just work. 
She said, no, you don't know who I am. And when she told them who their daddy was, they found out daddy was the president of the company. And because of why they treated her and what they said, they could lose their job. See, once people find out who your daddy is, then you can stand firm. Because the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, every demon and devil tremble at that name. See, we we are in Christ is why we can stand firm and we are equipped to be able to withstand everything that comes our way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> then in the last three chapters, he tells us, because God has given us his spirit and the rights and privileges to be called the sons of God, uh, uh, since we are a part of this family, then we need to carry ourselves a certain way. <laughs> he goes into how a Christian should act and live in the world, how we should live and act in the church, and how we should live and act in the home. Yeah. And then he goes into that he's equipped us to be able to live and act how we're supposed to in those three areas. Well, yes, sir. In other words, we should act like he. Paul goes into detail as Christians how we should act in all three of those areas, the world, the church, and the home. And he tells us that God has equipped us with everything we need to be able to act in a way that is honoring to God. Yeah. He has also equipped us to handle anything and everything that comes our way. Amen. See, there's a certain way we should act in the world. All right. See, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Right, right. We're ambassadors of Him. And how you carry yourself is how the world will perceive your daddy. Yeah. Are you representing Him in a way? Are you treating every situation and thing the way Jesus would? Yeah. Mm. He's giving you the Holy Spirit to give you the words you need to say. Uh -huh. Are you speaking like Jesus? Well, Are you walking like Jesus? Well, Are you talking like Jesus? Jesus didn't go around condemning people. Jesus went around loving people, showing them grace and mercy. And because he taught them out of love, they decided to leave everything and to follow him. Yeah. Yeah. Are they following you like Jesus? Hmm. Then he tells us that we need to act in the church. Are we treating our brothers and sisters in the church in a loving way? Caring way like Jesus. Or are we condemning folks and judging folks and caring and talking about people? There's a certain way that if your brother has alt against you, you're to go to that brother and talk to them out of love. Not condemning or ridicule, but out of love. Because they might not have realized what they do. You're not supposed to go to sister or brother so and so and tell them everything they did. You're to show them love. Then if it don't work, the Bible says that you're to bring a witness before you ever bring them to the church. Jesus gave us specific rules. He gave us his word as a piece of equipment to equip us how to handle situations and things. I do an online Bible study every Saturday morning from 7 to 8. And a few weeks ago, God gave me this sermon as I was teaching this on my Bible study. We were going through the book of Ephesians. And this Saturday, we finished up, we finished chapter 6. But last Saturday, I was teaching on, uh, on Ephesians chapter 5. And I got to the part of how a Christian should act in the household. Well, there's a certain way, and God has given us specific instructions on how we should treat an uh, act in the household. And I told them when I started to teach it, I said, this is one of the, some of the most misquoted, right. misinterpreted scriptures there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of men have taken the first part, women, submit yourselves to your husband, and they twisted that around to belittle her and to walk on her and to put her down. But Paul doesn't instruct us that. He says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Why? Because God holds him responsible for what goes on and that is allowed in the house. Yeah. He is held accountable for what, how the kids are raised and how they are treated. Right. 
God holds him accountable. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to tell you, hey, and God has equipped you with the love of Christ. You're equipped to love your wife like you're supposed to. All right. To love your wife as Christ loves the church. Yeah. If you're loving your wife the way Christ loves the church, the woman won't have no problems submitting to you. See, Paul gave specific instructions, and he says God has equipped you how to act. See, that woman didn't come out of your feet or your head, I told him. She, she came out of your rib, out of your side. She's your helping. She's supposed to walk alongside you, not underneath you. Well, 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 well. She's your companion in your helping. Preacher, preacher, preacher. See, God has equipped us with everything we need to be able to act in a way that is honoring and healing. Mm -hmm. And God has equipped you with everything you need to be successful in the world, in the church, in your ministry, and in your home. Yes. You know, a lawyer does not wake up one day and say, I think I'm going to be a lawyer today and walk in a courtroom and just start defending people. They would not be a very successful attorney. A successful attorney goes to court, school for so many years. Then they take an internship in a, an established law firm so they can watch some good attorneys and learn how they do things so they can learn the law and what they should and should not do in a courtroom. All right. Then they got to pass a bar exam to make sure they know what they're talking about. Yeah. Then they can go into the courtroom and be a successful attorney. Right. See, but first they got to go and get equipped with what they need to be successful. Well, yeah. Would you really want a doctor operating on you or treating you that's never been to med school? Mm -hmm. I know I would. I wouldn't want a dentist removing my, uh, doing a heart transplant on me. Because right, right. a dentist don't know the first thing about hearts. Right. He knows about my teeth. Mm -hmm. He's not equipped to do what I need him to do. See, athletes go through training. Yes, they learn the fundamentals of their sport. Right. They learn and get equipped with what they need. Yeah. They, get, they are given certain equipment to be successful out on the field. Football players are given mouth guards and helmets, shoulder pads and pads, so that, that when they take the blow, they'll be able to handle the blow. You'll see quarterbacks that carry a towel on the front of them to wipe their hands when it's raining or in weather conditions so they can hold the ball and throw it. Receivers will have special grip gloves that they wear that has grips on them so they can catch the ball and not fumble or lose it. All right. So they can be successful to win the game. Mm -hmm. God has equipped us. Mm -hmm. He has given us everything we need to be successful in this journey we call life. Yeah. And if God has called you and God has placed you someplace or in a ministry, God has already equipped you um, to do what you need to do. Don't you let that, nobody tell you you don't have enough education or you enough to have enough knowledge or you can't do what God has already told you you can do because God has already given you the knowledge you need. He's given you the words you need and he's equipped you with what you need to be successful. See, so if God has equipped us, then why do we fail sometimes? If we have if he's quit and we got what we need, then why do we fail sometimes? It's not because God hasn't done his part. Church, it's because we don't do our part. God has done our part. He is leading us, he's guiding us, he's training us, he's equipped us. The problem is we don't want to listen. All right, all right. 
A lot of us that get up in the morning and before our feet hit the floor, the first thing we grab is our cell phones and see what's going on on social media. How many of us wake up and say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me another opportunity? How many of us start our day with communicating with God? A lot of times, if we'll start our day communicating with Him, He'll speak to us and give us a word that we need that'll carry us through our day. Some of us, especially now that we're in this pandemic, some of us will tune in on Sunday mornings. And sometimes we might not. <laughs> Who's going to know it? But you know what? Your Father in Heaven knows. We think Sunday morning preaching service is enough. But our scripture text here in chapter 4 says this. Part of the equipment <laughs> that God has given, He's said to me, and He Himself gave some to be apostles. Some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the working of ministry, for that the airline of the body of Christ. Church, he's giving you your pastors and your teachers to help train you and teach you. If you're not showing up to Sunday school and Bible study, then you are not getting your training and being equipped. God, God's got it at your hand. You're just not doing your part by showing up and listening. Yeah. And in South Carolina, we have no excuse. Even in this pandemic, our pastor has us on the phone every day but Monday. <laughs> we have scripture and prayer meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Nights. We have Bible study on Wednesday morning and Wednesday nights. Bible study on Friday nights. First and third Sundays, kids, we got a youth church going on at 2 o'clock. Deacons and the tribe leaders have a conference call at one. This Sunday morning, we got Sunday school and church. We have no excuse to show up and see what God has to say to us. To help us through our week. A lot of us will read the word, a few verses, but we don't study the word. The Bible tells us to study, to show thyself a word. The word when they need to not be ashamed. Church. We got to study the word. Do you know the Bible says that the word of God is like a two-edged sword? It appears to wear the heart of man and convict them. And used properly, it can change people's lives. It can build people up. It can help correct people in love. If used properly, then we, we can win souls for God and build the kingdom, which God told us to do. Jesus said, go ye into all the world. But misused. Because you don't understand scripture. And you've taken the scripture and ran with it. Because you read something and you've twisted it around. And you really don't know what it means. Can hurt people and destroy people. Yeah. 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 We got to study the word. So we use the word of God properly. Yes. A lot of us don't even pray at the time. Mm. We God desires to communicate with us, with us so we can be able to use our equipment and weapons of warfare the way is that he's given us. It's there for us to use. We just don't use it. Church prayer time is not saying, now I lay me down to sleep. Praying before you eat. God wants you to communicate with him. Driving down the road in your car. Sometimes I get some of my greatest sermons just talking to God. You don't have to bow your head and get on your knees. You can just start conversing with God. When Moses went into the mountain, he didn't always lay on his face. He didn't always be on break. Yeah. Him and God had a friendship. They had a relationship. They had an intimacy. Because why? Because Moses spent time with God yeah. Yeah. and built a relationship with God. God was more than just his heavenly father. God was more than just his God. God was his best friend. Yeah. And Moses and God talked like that. Uh -huh. Holy God. We got to do our part. A good soldier examines their equipment. They train with their equipment. That way they know their equipment inside and out. And how to use it properly. We fail because we do not train and get to know our equipment properly. A good soldier polishes and sharpens their weapons. 
We got to study the word of God so we know how to use our soul. The Bible tells us in our reading to put on the full armor of God. He has given you his breastplate of righteousness. He's given you the spirit of truth to hold everything together. <laughs> you God, you need peace. I don't care how dark your situation looks. God has given you the shoes of peace. You're walking in peace. You got peace. You just need to know how to apply your peace. <laughs> He's given you a shield of faith. But most of us ain't even building up our faith and strengthening our shield. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You gotta listen to God. It's just not in the preaching and teaching. It's speaking with God and building a relationship with Him. The more time you spend with God, the stronger your faith will become. Then you'll be able to quench every fire of the enemy. When you learn to use your sword properly, when you learn to use this Bible and you study it properly, there is nothing you can't do. When Satan showed up in the wilderness and tempted Christ, Christ didn't worry and fret. Because God did not give us a spirit of fear. He did not create me to fear. He did not create me to worry. He created me to worship him daily. Jesus didn't fear and worry. He didn't run and flee. He didn't go back down out of the wilderness and get John the Baptist to help him. <laughs> Jesus defended the same. The Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee. Yeah. Jesus turned around and spoke the very word of God yeah. to him. Three times he did this. When Satan said, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. He said, ah, oh, devil, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Learn how to speak the word and the enemy will leave you alone. All right. All right. God has given you everything you need to be successful. David, Deacon Mary, come here for a minute. Pray for them. Yeah. 
Our scripture text also tells us that he's given us the armor. Hmm. He didn't say he's given it to you to put it aside <laughs> and just pull it out when you want to use it. Right. He told us to put it on. Yes. Keep it on. Yes. Be ready at any moment. <laughs> that way when anything and everything comes up against you, you know how to use it. And you can get through whatever you got. I don't care how dark your situation looks. I don't care what you're going through. I serve a God that even though the doctors say there is no hope, Jehovah Rapha has the last word. And I've seen him pick cancer patients up out of the bed and heal them. And doctors scratching their head. I can't understand what's happened. I've seen him take AIDS patients. Well, there's no sign that you even have the disease no more. It's not explained. You must not have had it. No, they had it. They just went to Jehovah Rapha. See, the doctors might not have a cure. But Jehovah Rapha has a cure for everything. When I need something, I've seen a God that will go in a courtroom and change a judge's mind, change an attorney's mind, have them show compassion, speak the word. Claim the word. Yeah. Take it to the one that can change things. The one that loves you enough to send his son to die upon a cross called Calvary. Yeah. That died for you. Yeah. Shed his blood for you. Yeah. Allowed his body to be spilled yeah. and beaten for you. Right. But he didn't stay there because three days later, God is down and told him out of the grave. Yeah. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Still interceding for us today. See, we serve a living God. We serve a God that will walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll be there for you. When no one else is there, God will wrap his arms around you and lift you up and cover you. We as a quick you church utilize what he's equipped you with. Hallelujah. Thank you.